In the ancient days when the mighty gods held dominion over the world, there lived a legendary Sumerian king by the name of Gilgamesh. Oh, what a ruler he was! He reigned over the splendid city of Uruk in the land of Mesopotamia. Gilgamesh, being a man of grandeur, constructed awe-inspiring ziggurat temples and encircled his city with towering walls. Not only that, he adorned his domain with luscious orchards where rare fruits flourished in abundance. But let me tell you, Gilgamesh was far from your run-of-the-mill individual. He possessed divine blood flowing through his veins, for he was the son of Lugobanda, the priest king and the wise cow goddess Ninsun. Yes, indeed he was a demigod. Gilgamesh stood tall, towering above all others, a true spectacle to behold. His beauty was simply magnificent and his physical strength unmatched. Now, there's a twist in the tale. Despite his demigod status and the prolonged span of his life, Gilgamesh was not blessed with immortality. Yes, even with his extraordinary attributes, he was still subject to the whims of mortality. Gilgamesh certainly had character, for he was full of arrogance and pride. He paraded around as a tyrant with no one daring to challenge him. He shamelessly abused kingly authority, demanding to be worshipped and revered by the people. Monuments were erected left and right, all in his honour. And when it came to matters of the heart, well, let's just say Gilgamesh had a wandering eye. He couldn't resist the allure of any woman who caught his fancy, regardless of her noble status or marital ties. Quite a Casanova, wouldn't you say? But as time passed, the people of Uruk grew weary of the king's cruelty and licentious behaviour. In their prayers to the gods, they pleaded for deliverance from the clutches of Gilgamesh, who had become a symbol of their suffering and indecency. The great celestial god Anu, moved by the plight of the humans, took pity on them. He commanded Aruru, the goddess of vegetation, to create a being that could rival Gilgamesh. And so, using a handful of clay, the skilled goddess Aruru fashioned a creature unlike any other, a hybrid of man and beast named Enkidu. Enkidu had a wild and primitive appearance, covered in hair and sporting bull's horns atop his head. He lived among the animals roaming the woods and plains of summer. Grazing on grass alongside gazelles and drinking water from the rivers, he formed a special bond with the animal kingdom. Enkidu became their protector, commanding their respect and obedience. However, in his solidarity existence, he remained distant from human interactions. News of the appearance of this enigmatic and powerful man reached the ears of Gilgamesh. Intrigued by the tales, our haughty king decided to send Shamhat, a priestess from the temple of Uruk, to investigate and, if possible, seduce this mysterious figure. Gilgamesh's plan was to strip Enkidu of his purity, a gift bestowed upon him by the goddess herself. To the priestess's astonishment, Enkidu proved to be just as impressive as Gilgamesh as she quickly found herself falling deeply in love with him. After seven days and nights of passionate love, Enkidu underwent a remarkable transformation. He learned to don clothes and partake in the pleasures of human food. It was Shamhat who then revealed to him the existence of Gilgamesh and the tyrannical rule he imposed upon the land. Now, in the city of Uruk, a grand wedding was set to take place. But as expected, Gilgamesh couldn't resist making his grand entrance, demanding possession of the bride even before the ceremony commenced. However, to the relief of the bride and groom, Enkidu emerged from the midst of the crowd. Guided by the priestess Shamhat, he arrived in the city. This ignited a fierce argument between Gilgamesh and Enkidu, centering around the audacity of interfering in the sacred union of two individuals deeply in love. For the very first time, Gilgamesh encountered someone who could stand up to him, and this stirred a deep anger within him. As chaos loomed, the crowd wisely distanced themselves, leaving the two colossal figures face to face. Gilgamesh, in his fury, was the first to resort to violence. The two mighty demigods exchanged powerful blows, engaging in an epic battle that raged uninterrupted for seven whole days. Their clash decimated numerous houses within the city, each strike they landed could have slain five seasoned warriors, yet neither showed signs of surrender. In a strange twist, they began to develop a mutual admiration for one another. Finally, Gilgamesh managed to land a solid blow, knocking Enkidu to the ground. But instead of seeking to eliminate his adversary, Gilgamesh extended his hand and helped Enkidu rise to his feet. 
Both warriors, filled with pride for their epic contest, embraced each other, initiating an internal bond of friendship. From that day forward, Gilgamesh transformed into a more just and compassionate ruler, ceasing to torment his people. In the years that followed, Gilgamesh and Enkidu embarked on countless adventures, venturing into uncharted territories, conquering monsters, and overcoming heroes of all kinds. However, a shadow of mortality loomed over Gilgamesh's mind. He recognized that both he and Enkidu were growing old and that they would eventually have to confront the inevitable, death itself. To etch their names into the annals of history, Gilgamesh proposed a daring quest to Enkidu to journey to the fearsome cedar forest where the dreaded demon Hambamba resided. Hambamba was a creature so dreadful and dangerous that even the gods held him in awe. It's worth noting that Hambaba had never posed a direct threat or committed any actions to provoke Gilgamesh's attack. Nonetheless, he had to defend himself against any intruders. When Gilgamesh and Enkidu finally laid eyes upon the monstrous Hambaba, they were struck with sheer terror. Such a terrifying sight had never greeted their eyes. Summoning their courage, Gilgamesh launched an assault with his trusty axe, striking at Hambaba's side. After several attempts, he managed to wound the beast. Enkidu then dealt the final blow, piercing Hambaba's throat with a spear, bringing an end to their nightmarish battle. As Hambaba drew his final breath, he placed a curse upon Gilgamesh and Enkidu, prophesying that one of them would meet their demise as punishment for their actions. Although Gilgamesh and Enkidu had achieved a tremendous feat by slaying Hambaba, their victory stirred the anger of the gods. Nonetheless, they returned triumphant to the city of Uruk, where they intended to revel in their accomplishment. Little did they know that an unexpected guest would make an appearance during their celebratory gathering. It was none other than Ishtar, the goddess of love, beauty, war, and fertility. She was captivated by Gilgamesh's remarkable handsomeness and strength and decided to make him her lover. Despite her alluring charms, Ishtar's attempts to seduce Gilgamesh were in vain. He rejected her advances, fully aware that all of Ishtar's previous lovers had met grisly fates. Incensed by Gilgamesh's audacity, Ishtar seethed with anger and vowed to exact revenge. She implored her father, the celestial god Anu, for assistance, beseeching him to unleash the mightiest creature of all to bring about the demise of Gilgamesh and Enkidu. Granting her plea, Anu sent the fearsome bull of heaven down to earth, unleashing seven years of famine, hurricanes, and earthquakes upon the land. The people of Uruk, facing the catastrophic consequences, turned to Gilgamesh and Enkidu, pleading for their help in vanquishing this celestial menace. Their epic clash between two demigods and the powerful divine bull shook the very foundations of Mesopotamia. Armed with the same weapons they had wielded against Hambaba, Gilgamesh and Enkidu fought together, their combined strength a force to be reckoned with. They succeeded in slaying the Bull of Heaven, a feat that reverberated through the heavens. As a gesture of disdain towards Ishtar, Gilgamesh severed one of the bull's legs and cast it at the feet of the goddess, who observed the battle from afar. This act not only enraged Ishtar further, but it also prompted the other gods to rise against Gilgamesh and Enkidu, intent on punishing them for their insolence. After much deliberation, the gods decided that Enkidu would be the one to pay the price, for he had held the Bull of Heaven by its horns, enabling Gilgamesh to deliver the final blow. Several days later, Enkidu fell gravely ill, recognizing that his end was near. Witnessing his dearest friend in such a dire state, Gilgamesh was consumed by despair. He implored the finest physicians in the kingdom to find a cure, but alas, their efforts proved futile. Enkidu, racked with agony, met his demise, leaving Gilgamesh devastated. In the grips of anguish, Gilgamesh cradled Enkidu's lifeless body, his mind clouded with delirium. For days on end, he wept inconsolably. Enkidu's death cast a shadow of existential dread over Gilgamesh, prompting him to confront the fragility of his own existence. Fearing the inevitability of his own demise, he embarked on a quest to unravel the secrets of immortality and seek a way to resurrect his fallen comrade. Through mountains and deserts, Gilgamesh journeyed tirelessly in search of a man named ut the sole survivor of the Great Flood, blessed by the gods with eternal life. Assisted by the boatman Urshanabi, he traversed treacherous waters crossing a vast lake tainted with poisonous currents. 
finally, he arrived at the abode of Utnapishtim, the immortal being. However, to Gilgamesh's dismay, Utnapishtim revealed that only the gods held the power to bestow everlasting life upon mortals. Nevertheless, Utnapishtim shared knowledge of a miraculous plant that lay hidden in the depths of the sea, a plant capable of rejuvenating and prolonging one's lifespan. Filled with hope, Gilgamesh plunged into the sea, retrieved the precious plant and emerged from the waters. As he prepared to cleanse himself from the arduous journey, tragedy struck. A cunning serpent lured by the plant's alluring scent devoured it before Gilgamesh could react. Realizing his missed opportunity, Gilgamesh beheld the sloth skin of the snake, a testament to its rejuvenation. He understood that no matter how mighty or wealthy a man may be, death could not be conquered. Accepting the inevitable, Gilgamesh came to terms with his fate. Returning to his beloved city of Uruk for the first time, Gilgamesh beheld its magnificence and enduring nature. Recognizing that his legacy as a fair and just king would be the closest semblance to immortality he could attain, he resolved to immortalize his own story. Gilgamesh, in his wisdom, inscribed this epic tale onto clay tablets, forever capturing the names of himself, his dear friend Enkidu, and the grand adventures they shared.